Talk 1340 KROC AM. This is Rochester Today. I'm Tracy McRae, along with Andy Brownell. Steve Lang is here. Did Stavro have his lips on the microphone? I just don't know how close to get. Well, we're just debating who has the better theme music. This is pretty good. What's his theme music? Gregory has got fanfare. It's, yeah, it's, it doesn't have this kind of presence. I'm human and I need to be loved. (laughs) Just like everybody else does. Just like everybody else does. I mean, does. if that doesn't encapsulate me, I don't know what does. True. Captures And you. all of us. Um, I just have to say, before we even start talking about Rochester Magazine, which is the reason that you're here, the Faces of Education sure. issue. Right. That last night's column was about your obsession with CB radios. And again, BJ and the Bear was my favorite television show. And how have we never talked about that? All of the years that I've known you. I thought you guys would have been too young for the CB radio thing. No. no BJ McCain, his best friend, Bear, come Yeah, Smoking the Bandit, BJ and the Bear. That Smoking was all the Bandit, absolutely. Late 70s. Pretty CB related. I was 10. And after okay. that movie came out, um, Smoking and the Bandit, yes. then they cleaned it up and they ran it all the time on network television. What do you mean cleaned it up? Well, I don't know. I I've never it, seen the real version. I don't think there was anything nasty in that show. I would it? imagine that there is, but I've never seen the real version. I don't <laughs> Something know. Something tells me that it was far, <laughs> there were some much worse scenes that didn't make it on the TV. <laughs> that's, what I would, that's what I've guessed all of this time. Me, you know what? Now I know what I'm going to do this weekend. Watch the unedited Thank you, Netflix. director's <laughs> cut of Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, Smokey and the Bandit. I thought I'd hey. be BJ and the Bandit. Oh, no. no. Smokey and the Bandit. Ah. Yes. Yeah, I, no, I don't think there's... Did you go to it in the theater? Yes, I did. I just Googled it. It was rated X originally. Everybody wanted a 1977 Trans Ham with the T-top and the 455. I would just assume that there's a lot more... Hang on. Huh? Google Smokey <laughs> and the Bandit. <laughs> there were swear words in it. Searching Google for Smokey. Oh, get out of here. Oh, Show off. <laughs> Sorry, let's see what Siri tells my, me about my it. My phone can talk. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, right. You know, and I, I don't even think the F word got mentioned in that movie, wow. the original movie. Here's the problem. Can you say that on the air? The Here F-word. is the problem. There are so many movies that my husband and I both watched as kids or whatever, and we're like, oh, the, we can show this one to the kids. They love it. And then we get 10 minutes into the oh, movie no. and go, whoa, I didn't shot. remember Ferris Bueller was like this. It says uh, Jackie Gleason yeah. had okay, four it's minutes. About as fa- it's probably... Yeah, that's probably equal to Ferris Bueller. In the original, Jackie Gleason had four minutes of full frontal nudity. It did not. <laughs> I'm just well, Googling it. Nobody would have seen the it movie. Says, that was the case. When it first aired on network television, censors were faced with the challenge of toning down the raw language of the original film. They overdubbed dialogue deemed offensive, which was remains common practice. Well, that's funny. So then we can't show it to the kids. There's uh, too much language. Nope. No, there's not. Compa- He's just saying for no- the some words they use. Some of the some of the words they replaced. Jackie Gleason was <laughs> some. You can finish the rest of it. That was often. Yep, mentioned. that's what, on here a contraction of you know something. A son of a something. Oh yeah, scum bum. Yeah, oh, that's funny. And uh, whenever you could, some, you could do this on network TV right now without any problem at all. That's what I was going to say. Actually, network TV now versus network TV then is probably a whole different oh. kit and caboodle. Can we just get back to CB it radios? It's the longest full frontal nudity scene. <laughs> <laughs> did you have, ever have a CB radio? <laughs> to that he day. did. Did you read his column? He, no, had, he just got rid of it. So he still I, had it, huh? We had a CB radio from when I was like I had 10. Tons of them. And it was something, it was a cool brand. It was like one of the few, it was like Unidin Cobra. or whatever. So I had it, and for some reason I'd kept it all this time. So we used it for like two year period, and I could not wait to use it. We'd get in the car, and I had the little booklet with all the information. You know, it was just so ridiculous at the time because I was a 10-year-old kid. I said the m- main reason most of the truckers talked to me is because they thought I was a woman. Because of, of my voice at the time. Right, so right. Until they realized I was a 10-year-old boy, then <laughs> conversations tended the to end pretty of the abruptly. Radio. <laughs> but, you know, it was just so ridiculous when you think back at it now, like the coding. I mean, it was, you know, the cops must have had no idea what people were yeah. talking <laughs> about with you know, this. No clue. Bear in the grass with a. Taking photos, taking but pictures. How did you know? Did Convoy. your did your dad did your dad teach you the CB lingo, or how did you? We learn had it? a booklet, and I think it came with the CB radio <laughs> that had all the ten 
things and what they meant, and then I had a bunch of the terminology of what it meant. So I would just go through that booklet and repeatedly say those phrases over and over. Did you have a friend that you would do this with, or did you just do it with your dad? So mostly my dad. I know he had a buddy that had one, and we would talk to him sometimes. But mostly it was just riding with my dad and, you know, desperately Everybody trying to is. contact anyone who would tell me anything about, you know, the smoky reports or bears in the air. Or whether we should be going air. double nickel in the granny lane. But your kids now, that's the best part. Because this is one of the things that the kids don't actually think would be a real thing. Until you, know, you say, no, this is a CB radio. This is what we did with it. And they're no, you didn't. And you so didn't I have got, cell phones? I got it out. I, was, I sold it on eBay. And I got it out and put it in the car. What did you get for it on eBay? Just curiosity. It was actually more than I thought because I... <laughs> you can buy them at truck stops. Still. I don't think the handle works. So I, when I was calling people, I'm not sure it was actually working. Because then I, when I told them, I said, I'm not sure the microphone itself works. Because I couldn't get the click to make it sound. I think it sold for like 60 or 80 bucks. It was a ridiculous amount what? for an old CB radio, yes. The big brands were, you said Uniden was a big brand, but Bearcat. Bearcat. Cobra. Um, gosh, what are the other ones? And so you were a CB guy, too? Everybody was. What was your handle? Google CB brand. You know what? I think I can remember. I think at one, there was multiple Here ones. We go. I think for a while there, I was the Raven. <laughs> See, I know I was the... You were the what? Phantom. The Phantom version? <laughs> that was my dad. Had, always went by the Phantom. So. But we were old enough, we had cars. Mm-hmm. So everybody had to have the CB radio in your car because that's, you know, nowadays it's text messages. Sure. So if you wanted to find out what was going on Friday night... Oh, you CB didn't pick radio. up a telephone. Everybody got on whatever channel it was, and I don't remember what it was back then. And they would, you'd, and we even had this. I suppose when you had had LEDs on it, we had the ones this that were old enough LED, that they yeah. were nineteen channels, and they would go like a old TV knob, click, 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 yeah. click Cobra, Uniden, I didn't have Galaxy. I didn't yep, have a Galaxies. CB radio, but I never had the big giant whip. Antenna. I never had that. We had an antenna, and this one even had an antenna that you could attach to the car. It was like a magnet where you'd sn- snap the magnet yep. down and it would hold into place, then you'd unsnap the magnet. Our house got hit Midland. by lightning one time. Yeah, Midland. Midland, Midland yeah. big brand. We got hit by lightning one time because of the CB antenna that I had on the house. Oh, my gosh. Because I had a battery. I actually had a car battery, that I so I'd take the radio out of the car, and then we'd put it in the house. I don't remember. And I had an antenna have, on the house, and I got hit. We did not have a CB radio, but... Not on the farm, you know, really? My dad farmed with his brothers, and so we had a... It was like our own contained little radio system so all the pickups had one each house had one we were the bases hmm. the trucks were the mobiles and i lived at base four so like my dad was the fourth brother so actually gonna go this instead of saying this is tracy you would say this is base four we'd say base four <laughs> so here's what here what here's what it was k double x two three five base four to mobile four that was me calling my dad yeah and like the fcc was actually listening well and the only other people that sometimes would come in through on that channel was a farm from up in North Dakota. And every once in a while, you would hear them comment about something we had just said. <laughs> oh my God, and I would want to get on there and go, we can hear you. If but you it can was hear weird. us, we can, can hear, hear you. you, you dummies. And I do remember North Dakotans. early <laughs> enough that when you f- we first got into the CB radios and probably the early to mid 70s, <laughs> that it was very strict. Everybody had to get on and give their call sign. Yes. Because you were afraid the FCC was going to bust you if you didn't. KWX 235. But then it took off and it sure. got so huge that even the FCC considered it. Yeah, we should whatever. take it back. Who needs cell phones? Let's get radios back in our cars. There was an underside to that. There were some creepers out there, too. I do remember no. that. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't try to sully this. Don't try to scare everybody, Andy. <laughs> Come on, it could be great. It would be so fun. Our kids would be so yeah, there's, embarrassed. There's no creepers on the internet at all. No, not no. at all. It's 1019 KROCAM. I don't have, we could do the whole big long, we used to have the whole big long thing that we would say once a, once a day we would have to do our, we don't have to do it anymore, FCC regulations of some kind. I don't remember I what it was. So we signed off and we don't oh, sign off yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Are we still on the air? <laughs> are, you, are we on commercial we break? To, we'll used to be at sunset you had to do a big thing because you would knock down right. to a different power. At I night. am not kidding. I do not know if we're on the air right now. I thought you were taking a break. We will. And we'll start talking about your magazine in just a moment or two. 
Not before the commercial break is done, though. <laughs> okay, so we're on right now, we are. then. Okay. Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine is here. We'll look at the weather I forecast next. K-R-O-C-A-M. Yeah. It's brought to you by Mystic Lake Casino. Mixed Martial Arts returns to Mystic Lake this Friday night with Resurrection Fighting Alliance 19. Don't miss a night of nonstop in-your-face action. Get tickets at mysticlake.com. I had to have you read it because it just doesn't make any sense for me. I don't understand mixed martial arts. You're more WWE? <laughs> I suppose. A mix of clouds and sun It's today. popular, though. I know it is. That's why I don't understand. Are we back on the air? We are. 57 degrees. Tonight, 40. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 55. Friday, sunny and 54. Saturday, 55. Sunday, 57. Monday, 60. There is a chance for some rain on Sunday into Monday. It is sunny and 51 right now at KROC AM. Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine is here. The new issue is the Faces of Education issue. What? Where did this idea come from? You've never done this before. This was a Kosky thing, and boy, uh, Jennifer Kosky's our associate editor, but this was a Kosky thing, and it just turned out, you know, as good as these things get. So we've done a few of these kind of faces of Rochester things and, you know, really love letting people tell their own stories. And I think we started off kind of doing that, and then Jennifer was like, you know what, let's concentrate just on educators. And she got 10 educators from all walks of education, and... The response we've gotten from this has just been through the roof. Absolutely, because it's really good. Every teacher has three or four of those touching, moving, hard to believe stories that happen to them in the classroom, and every one of these teachers has those stories. I mean, you read Julie Brock's alone. I mean, you want to cry at some of the stuff when you're talking about, you know. There are times where they're under so much pressure and stress, and they're just thinking, okay, is this really worth it? It just doesn't seem like I'm reaching anyone. And then, you know, she finds her box of cards that she just happened to go through and, and look back at the number of kids who'd written letters or the kid who in class. Mrs. Brock believes in everyone. Yep, so had written, Mrs. Brock believes in everyone. I mean, how touching is that to hear back about yourself from someone who you're trying to teach that sort of message to? I would have to think that you have gotten dozens of people saying, well, this is really great, but you really missed the boat because you didn't include blank. Oh, yeah, that'd be tough. You because know- <laughs> I was reading this and I went, where's Mrs. Reed? Why is Mrs. Reed not in? What? There's no Mrs. Reed. And I do know some of these people in here, and you are right. Some of them, um, the ones that I know are wonderful people, wonderful teachers. But um, And Mrs. Reed can blame you because the one thing we did do is we really posted it like crazy in the front end, just asking <laughs> for suggestions from people. And we got... It was unbelievable the amount of response we got. We'd done a couple different asks on Facebook and just the number of people who responded, again, with these really touching stories about the teacher who, you know, changed their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, a single teacher in a single day or week or semester who changed their life. And so, you know, we did try to get a big variety of everything from pair to, you know, higher education. Isn't that why you'd want to be a teacher, though? Because obviously the pay isn't going to be why you want to be a teacher. No, the summer's off, I guess. Yeah, you got the Most of them off. don't have the summer's off, though, no, because the kidding. pay is so bad they have to get a job in the summer. To oh, it's certainly most why. Of, most of the teachers I know end up going back to school in the summer. Now exactly. To, to boost their, but I, what I'm saying is you're not going to get rich Absolutely. being a teacher. It is, but I think until you ask people about it, and I think this is true for every occupation and every person, especially these types of jobs, but sometimes until you ask them about it and let them tell these stories... You get so caught up in the day-to-day grind or the negatives that you forget to take a look back. So for Julie Brock to look back and remember that moment of the kid saying, Mrs. Brock believes in everyone or writing mm-hmm. that in a paper. I mean, I think it's cathartic for them as well because you get to you get to kind of reflect on the positive you have created or been part of. It's uh, 1027 at KROC. Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine is here. We'll continue to talk about this latest issue, which is on stands now. But Andy Brownell has got some local news and the weather I forecast coming up. News Talk 1340 KROC AM. This is Rochester Today. Tracy McCray, Andy Brownell, Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine. We spent the whole time that you were doing news talking about Legos. (laughs) We waited till you (laughs) left the room. (laughs) Because... Did your son do Legos? Was Everybody he a Lego? did Legos. I did Legos. Well, we didn't. I don't know. My mom wouldn't get them for us. I don't know. Too busy on your my mom wouldn't local let CB, I guess. My mom wouldn't let us listen to the Rolling Stones. You wouldn't allow, yours didn't allow Legos. Yep. That's true. My mom had a 45 of brown sugar, and I listened to it <laughs> like crazy. 
Yeah, I don't. Uh, they can take over your whole life, and people will. We got bins and bins and bins of Legos handed down by a cousin. And I took ownership of those Legos when Olivia was probably two. So they're the old school Legos. They are. They are from the 80s. And so my son then didn't start playing with them. There was one Christmas when we were stuck here and Joel grabbed one of the sets of directions and started making a helicopter. And all of a sudden, boom. (laughs) The two kids and dad were off on Lego explosion, and then then we started acquiring. Then the kids started buying more. They'd go to garage sales and buy more and more. And we have so many Legos now, I don't know what we're going to do with them. I had no idea there is a whole, and it makes perfect sense, a whole secondary market that you have tapped into. So on Saturday, <laughs> we're trying to, Henry wanted to get rid of his bunk beds, and we said, we'll just leave the loft so we took the bottom bunk bed out, left the top bunk bed, and secured that. And is this stable? Yeah, it's stable enough. <laughs> He'll be fine. Kid. He's a He'll be kid. fine. <laughs> yes, I stabilized it. But anyway, so then, you know, he's got buckets and buckets of Legos, and he has spent every penny over the last two years buying Legos. Now Absolutely. it's Rubik's Cubes. Before that, it was Nerf guns. He sold all his Nerf guns on eBay and bought Legos and then bought more and more Legos. So well, he said, you know Nerf what? guns now. He sold the Nerf guns on eBay and yeah. made a, you know, it's crazy how much some of that stuff sells for. <laughs> Hooray so, for eBay. How <laughs> about Rubik's Cubes? I can't believe that they're still hot. They are a huge. huge comeback right yes. now. In fact, Henry is planning on going to the World Cubing Association event November 1 in Minneapolis. There's an, a sanctioned event here with, it'll have 100 to 150 Rubik's Cubers from all over the world. How fast can you do it? He So he could do it. An average less than 40 seconds, and his really? top times were about 25. Then wow. he realized his cubing event was coming up, and that wasn't going to be good enough. He has completely scrapped his current algorithms and learned a whole new system. So for the next three weeks, he'll be learning his new system of algorithms. Last night, he came in and said, okay, I just did a five-solve oh. series and averaged 35 seconds. Wow. It's crazy. It, it is, is. I mean, I've had mine for 30 years, and I've still never solved it. I did it once, and I said, I'm done. Never again. And just watch him. Like he'll be looking at you when he's doing it, like turning yeah. the stuff and looking at you. Because instead of once the cube. you figure out, once you take a look at it and see it, you really can do it. Because I've seen Andy do it this way. Because it takes him, but it, it takes him two and a half, almost three minutes. To oh my do gosh, his. that's outrageous! That's I know, but what I'm saying he is, still go. he looks at it, and then he he doesn't need to look at it anymore. And he did, he solved the Rubik's cube for a talent show at school, and it two and a half minutes seemed like. A lifetime for me. I was in the back of the gym going, please let this happen. And when he got done, he just holds it up in the air and the kids just went crazy. And, but he was looking up and then he would show off because he'd be like, mm, and he'd look up yes. and he's doing it. So they don't, you don't have to look at it because of the algorithm. That I always tell about. Henry, I'm like, will you stop looking at me when you're solving it because it just creeps me out? It does. It is so funny. But no, he's put, you know, he's got notebooks with all those little notes about different things. He actually, was emailing through us, so it was legit another cuber who, because he was trying to learn this new series of algorithms and asking him, how long will it take? How long, you know, should I start doing this now and have it in time for this, you know, event? And even the event, there are guys that solve it average like eight seconds. I mean, we were horrified because Henry was looking at it and he's like, you know, Chris Mortensen's going to be there. And we're like, what? You know Cubers by name? And he's like, yeah, this guy's like the record holder in the two by two. It's like, oh, please stop. <laughs> so so is, is it blogs that they look at? They, I mean, there's plenty of YouTube stuff. There are YouTube. plenty of sites. Yeah. And there's a number of people who do this professionally. They get paid to do this for a living. They, they solve it. And okay. So he's 150 people at the Wisconsin event. His time, even if he averaged 40 seconds or 45 seconds, we put him like 100 out of 150. I thought that's. It's excellent. I mean, great to go and do this. He just wants to go watch these people do it. So, as you know, alien as that sounds, I've learned of this entire society that exists out there on the internet dealing with gaming, yeah. not just. But it, this is the twist that I I still cannot get anybody to explain this to me that why this works. But these kids, and that's exactly who it are. Kids or very young adults post videos of themselves playing the games Mm -hmm. and offering extremely juvenile um, commentary as they play the games. (laughs) And (laughs) it's it's completely worthless. 
and they'll post these videos or they even stream these videos through it's not through YouTube it's it's actually there's pay subscription sites that people subscribe and pay to watch these people do this and they have different channels that you watch because they think they're going to pick up tips on how to do it no people donate money to them oh my gosh they literally donate cash to people <laughs> to have the privilege of watching oh. them play a game and make stupid comments while you uh, See? I, I, I'm just flabbergasted. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I go, okay, number one, why would you subscribe to it? That's the first thing. And then number two, when there's no requirement for you to make a doma- donation to watch somebody waste their time, why? What would, Im- what would cause you to go through the process of giving them money? Steve, why do you do it? <laughs> I'm sure Andy went to some Twins games this year. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh, it's 1041 at KROC. Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine is here. Oh, that's right, the magazine. Maybe we'll talk about that when we return. KROC AM. Partly sunny today, 57. Tonight, partly cloudy, 40. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 55. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, sunny to clear skies in the mid-50s. A chance of scattered rain showers comes in on Sunday and into Monday, but still around 60 degrees on Monday. It's sunny and 52 at KROC AM. Steve Lang from Rochester Magazine is here. Should we talk about the magazine some more? Or sure. Is there anything else? So anyway, I don't have any sent all those Legos. So if you go on eBay, you can find them. They're in big groups of 10 and 15 pounds. That's funny. Local, free local pickup. The um, My first time, I'm... You know, I love Jen Kosky when she writes that, but I kind of like the idea that she's handing it off to other people. You know, our intern, Liz Lutfi, had really wanted to do something first person, and so we were trying to fit it in, and Kosky did. She said, you know what? Do it as a my first time. It was laser tag. So, you know, again, it was just great experience for the intern to get to do a number of different types of stories, including this first person piece that, that turned out pretty good about her first time playing laser tag at, at Bolo City. <laughs> Bolo City. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I thought we were calling it Bolo City to we annoy are, the kids. We are to annoy the kids, yes. <laughs> and the owner. Sorry, Gene. <laughs> yeah, just going to have to live with it. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so um, is Zach Klein the Zach Klein that we all know? Is that Mike Klein's kid? It is Mike okay. Klein's kid, yep. So he is Mike friends Mike Klein with, of the Post Bulletin, He is friends say. with Liz and actually went along on the uh, laser tag and shot that photo. That's cool. So are you going to take more of my first times from other people that have my first times to offer? Probably not. I mean, it's really Kosky's deal, and I think this was partially her trying to work the intern through some chances to do first-person stuff. But, you know, and we do get a ton of uh, entries for first-person columns and stuff for the magazine, and we we just rarely take them because we already have so many, but... You know, we're always open to story ideas, but no, I think this will probably revert back to a um, mostly Kosky deal. All right. What other things do you want to highlight from the magazine? This uh, is the kind of stuff that we could have done off air, but we were too busy talking about Legos. You know, again, <laughs> I love the fact for the ed- face of education story that we have people that are so recognizable for different things. So Roger Larson, who's the eighth grade earth science teacher at Kellogg, he is also the- known as the cover boy. He's the cover boy, He's and he cover is the guy. guy who, for years, has taking, taken the kids on the uh, whatever incarnation of the New York, D.C. trip they've oh, done. Oh, cool. So, so many people recognize him because he was their New York, D.C. trip leader. Another great one is... Um, Monica Bowler. Monica Bowler, who... She was... You know, pr- an excellent yeah. principal at uh, Friedel, mm-hmm. and, you know, moved on to... Gifted Services and Health Science Career Center. Joyce Gibbs. Joyce Gibbs is a great one. Having, you know, the kind of history she had here and, you know, obviously a husband with a school named after yeah, Everybody him. knows George, but let's talk about Joyce. And, you know, when Gibbs Elementary opened, she uh, she probably still does volunteers up there. And some she told me that some of the kids were saying... Hey, your name is the same as our school. <laughs> She'd say that's because the school is named after my husband, and the kids were it would just blow their minds. And she just has these great stories of being one of the, f- you know, one of the few or earliest African American teachers in Rochester. Mm-hmm. About you know the kids saying things like, "I didn't know there were black teachers," and her right. getting a chance to expose kids to in Rochester in the. I think late 60s and 70s right. when she started teaching to something they'd never seen before. So she's got some great stories, you know, some from that angle, but again, mostly just from that 
general teacher angle of... I also like stories, and it doesn't matter if it's whatever, but just people, how they got to be where they're at, how they became a teacher in this instance. And her story about how she became a teacher, is it's just interesting. How, does, how do people end up on the path that they're on? She was 16 in 1950, and she said she lied about her age to take a job paying the most she could find, 35 cents an hour, and then attended college at night taking shorthand and typing and hope that when she became 18, she could find a better job and always really wanted to teach and then just got, you know, uh, sidetracked by life and kids and everything else and, you know, came back to it later and now spends a lot of time volunteering mm-hmm. and working in education now. The, the one thing that got me in it when she was asked when she would graduate after starting so late, she's all the same age I'd be if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yes. That's a good way to put it. And Moose Doherty, I, I love some of these stories, too, about the early childhood teachers. She's a longtime uh, pair teacher. A lot of these people do it, and they don't get that kind of recognition because the kids are often too young to remember them and come back later. But, you know, she's been through uh, kids who now have their own kids teaching right. or taking the pair classes in the system. So Leslie McClellan had some great stories. She's the new president of Rochester Community and Technical College. So just... I think Jennifer did a great job of getting people from, like I said, all different aspects of education. So because there's probably a lot of folks who have said, hey, you forgot about, in my case, Mrs. Reed, um, this is hopefully going to become a yearly thing for you guys. You know, clearly this is one of those that when we do next time and we find this with all of these types of stories, people realize that, hey, they really can play a role in who gets to be part of this. So... If we get a lot of suggestions for one teacher or a couple really well thought out and and uh, moving stories for one teacher, certainly that helps it helps us find the people we want to find and and like I said, we must have gotten a hundred responses from this when we posted it on Facebook for people talking about the teacher who made a real difference in their well, life. You know, think about it, your own life. I mean, if you were to name influential people in your life. There's got to be a list of the teachers you had that would be dang Absolutely. near the top of the list. I can name off probably a dozen if I sat here and mm-hmm. thought about it that uh, played a huge role in what I do and what, the way I think about things. And your point, Steve, that the preschool teachers probably don't get the props. Like you said, Mrs. Brock got the the letter saying, you know, she believes in everyone. That's because those are high school kids that can Remember. respond that, you know, sure. verbalize that. The little bitty kids... You don't really get that as much. And so I hadn't thought about that part of it. No, and one of them mentioned it in one of their stories that, you know, we don't get that. So you see them and you get to live in the moment, but they're not coming back 15 years later and saying, oh, you were the best, you know, teacher I ever had because they were three or four at the time. And they don't they remember get, you. They get the props from the parents, though. And they do. And that was a big part of what a number of those people had to say was that the parents coming back and saying, you know what, my kid came into your class one way and left your class another way. And those are things that put them on the on the right path for the rest of their lives. Um, let's see. In your, um, you do have the Fright Farm page. Are you going to that? Heavens no. <laughs> okay. I, and you did not believe me. I think it was last month when I told you that Fright Farm has, what is it this year? The Clown, Clown Town Bus, bus <laughs> Tour. Clown Town Bus Tour. Yeah, I saw that. And I Custom went, well, made. It's true. It sounds on the surface like a super fun bus ride. It's the Clown <laughs> Town Bus Tour. It does not. Tour. Actually, on the surface, it sounds like a terrible I mean, clowns, thing to do. It's fun. But then when you get on it, I got a bad feeling that they're not... <laughs> Not Insane the, clown posse, the music will start to play. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it would be good. And I, you know, I knew this thing existed. I really hadn't, I, we'd never been there. They sent a bunch of photos of this. And we that's did, the least objectionable one that you could put in? This is the most pleasant of all of them. <laughs> oh, it's horrifying terrible. Horrifying bloodstained creature holding a chainsaw above his head. But the production value that goes into this looks stunning. I mean, it, it looks like it is a full-blown... 30 minute tour that is going to scare the heck out of you. I don't want to do it. You know, when I don't like, I've never liked Even houses. when you're a little. Never. When I was a teenager, you know, like the JCs would have a haunted house. And so I'd go because all the friends, but I hated every my, second of it. I don't my, like it. My kids hate them, hate scary movies, so I'm sure we're not going I, there. I liked it, the whole scare people and be scared thing when I was young. I mean, but very young. And mm-hmm. then lost that very 
you know, in young adulthood. I, I never went to see the horror movies. I just, why am I sitting here being scared? I this don't enjoy This goes it. along with the whole, you know, there's sketchy people out there in CB radio land. I always <laughs> have assumed that the reason why there's haunted houses is because somebody just wanted an excuse to grab at me. And if we were not in a haunted house, they would be arrested for doing that. But sure. because you're at a haunted house, then it's okay. Just as, this is what I say about the Renaissance Festival. If we weren't at the Renaissance Festival and you talked to me like that, you could get arrested. Same kind of deal. Well, you know what you're getting into then when you go here. You better expect to be grabbed. <laughs> I don't want to be on a bus with clowns. I'm not going to go to Let's this Let's do thing. it. I think we should all do it this year. I'll meet you live. there. Live. We'll I'll do meet it live. You. I'll meet you there. Okay. I promise. I would never go back on that promise. Be some good live radio. Do you really have cyberchondria or are you just needed something to write about because I, I, mean, I don't see you as being this type of a person i don't but i like delving into it i mean i don't i don't think i have it no it's the new hip version of hypochondria we did, hypochondria. A, we did a mayo clinic radio episode i know on you it, did and actually <laughs> i think that might be how it came up because koski and a- jamie clemenson at work had also taken part in this mm-hmm. mayo clinic questionnaire about cyberchondria and so that's why it started as these guys are always doing it they're throwing out symptoms at work and i'm googling it and you know instantly trying to diagnose them in the office which this is, is why the number of people that think they have ebola i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> jamie was sick she said i have i've got a cold i'm sick i just it makes me a little nervous i'm like you, you got a cold <laughs> yes you haven't left rochester you know <laughs> well, see now when i do this I do, the problem is people leap to the worst, right? I know they My do. problem is I always leap the other way. I go, ah, yeah, it's, it's nothing. nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> one I, of these days, that's going to bite me. True. I'm probably more that way, too. I mean, and I'm one of those people that I, even when I have something bad, by the time I get to the doctor and I'm sitting in the doctor's office, I'm thinking, oh, why am I in here? You weenie. You don't need to be yeah. in here. This, it's nothing. Forget it. And you know my ankle's broken. I like the fact that you go through it and you say, "Oh my gosh, I've got uterine fibroids." I was pretty <laughs> sure I had that. Now that would be something. Well, because my I was tired. I was real tired. <laughs> okay. And the area where your uterine I fibroids played. would be just felt kind of painful. Backache and leg pain. And I played yes. poker the night before. And I was just tired. I just I got up in the morning. I just felt tired. I thought there's got to be something major wrong. Here's what I know from my years of, and it's only been a few here, half a dozen, of working with the doctors from Mayo Clinic Radio, is if you start off a sentence with, I was looking online, there becomes a, <laughs> very quickly, a look on their face that becomes the, oh, that they just kind of go into this pageant smile, kind of, oh, that's nice. It's got to be horrible it's for them. Hor- it has to be the worst for like the triage nurses, any any. Medical okay. professional. But here's the irony of that is now the Mayo Clinic's embracing this new Technology. I- iPhone app that's going to provide all this data that's going to be linked up to these websites that will give you suggestions based upon all this stuff going on. So they're, they're actually encouraging it in a way. I think, well, oh, yeah. because They the, want you to do it in the right way, I that's think. That's exactly the point, that it's more of the uh, jawbone or the Fitbit type of a thing where you're getting feedback and you're here is how to be healthier instead of let's figure out what's wrong with you. It's here's how to be healthier. The people who, the amount of time, I had no idea until we did that program, the amount of time that some people spend on WebMD And the anxiety, I mean, there are folks who really can get themselves whipped up into a a lot of pain and fear because of cyberchondria. It sounds like a joke, but it's totally true. But that happened happened before the internet. I I knew a number of people before the internet that would just constantly be calling the doctor. What the doc said was that it used to be photocopied pages of Reader's Digest (laughs) is what people would bring into doctor's appointments. And that's what he said. That was what it was. And now it is, you know, WebMD. And it is a very real thing. I mean, the studies show it's doubled since 2008. It's the, the number is stunning. It's like 90% of the people who actually search for symptoms leap to a conclusion that is worse than what the symptoms dictate. So, you know, clearly it's people looking to get riled up by information. And it's also part of our society that we have decided that aging is a disease. That's true. And that every single thing that happens as you get older is some sort of medical condition rather than just 
a condition of life. And my no one spends more time looking up things on the internet regarding his body than my dad. And the problem is he's wrong 99% of the time, but then he's right once. There was one time where he brought something to the doctor, they told him something else, and he Googled it, then came back and said, I think it's this, here's what I found. The doctor's like, yep, sorry, you were right. And now there is no way There's that no stopping he's not... Him. The expert on every condition he has in his body. Does he talk to Siri? You guys wasted that college (laughs) education going to get a medical degree. Does he have Siri? Does he ask Siri? You know, he (laughs) has Siri. I don't think he knows how to use it. I did teach him how to use the talk to text, which I like a lot because I can't type. But, uh, you know, he's actually fairly uh, knowledgeable with the smartphone, that sort of thing, at 80. Well, that is the problem. When it works out once, then then he's kind of... I used to do it with my mechanic, so this is a, you'll hate this even more than the doctor thing, but I had a mechanic who I never felt was diagnosing things correctly, so I would get online, and I had a Jeep Cherokee, yeah. and it had this sway in it we couldn't figure out. He'd ride with me, it wouldn't work, we'd hit the speed where it would, you know, the residents would kick in and it would not work, and so I finally Googled it and found it and told him, and he still refused to change that part, and he would change something else, and I said, look, I found this, and then he did, and I was right, <laughs> and I couldn't go back to him again because he was so angry at me. <laughs> well, yeah, Was he really? Perhaps, he did not like it. Perhaps you shouldn't have gone back to him in the first place, son. I wanted to, you know, after he had worked on it for so much, he was giving me deals then to check, change the next thing and the next thing. Oh, because see, the, if you ask me, the good mechanics are the ones that will take your input. That's right. That no matter, and again, back to... why is it any different with doctors then? Th- well, doctors, that's what, good doctors do take your input. That's just this but don't be crazy weekend, about it. Doc, that's what Dr. <laughs> Shive said. Anytime, it was about surgeons, and if you were... A surgeon doesn't make you feel comfortable, then you should go find another surgeon. Well, it's the same thing with diagnosing the car. The better you can describe the problem, the better chance the mechanic has of fixing it, and if you can describe what's happening with you. Thanks for being here, Steve oh, we're Lang. We're out of time already. Thanks we for are having out of us. Tone. Talk to you next month. See you.